So in a previous video, I went over 3D modeling and navigation, and I went over how to do some 3D primitives and uh, basic extrusions. In this video, I kind of want to go over a, a bit more on um, expanded extrusions and creating the methods of creating 3D solids. And I'm really going to focus here um, on these icons here in the ribbon uh, and including press pool. So we've got um, uh, extrude, revolve, loft, sweep, and press pool. Under the box here, you'll see all your 3D primitives, which um, I think I went through that uh, in the last video. Um, and I will get around to doing most of this stuff here. Solid history, even though it's shown as a large box and it's turned on, leave it turned on for now. I will make a separate video on what solid history does and how it can it can uh, affect uh, your modeling. So for now, let's go through some of these things. Uh, you've got your basic extrude, which I'm going to go over again, but in a little bit more detail. So let's start off, start off with a basic rectangle here. And all this stuff I've got, this, this extra um, objects, they're going to be for separate purposes. So we'll use that later. For now, we're going to do uh, our basic extrude. And just to kind of recap real quickly, because the other one was kind of buried in the middle of a video. Um, with extrude, you uh, select your icon or type in the command ext, is the, the alias for that. Select your object has to be a closed boundary. If it is not a closed boundary, and I'll, I'll do both here. Uh, if, it, if it is a closed boundary, you'll get a 3D solid out of it. And you can uh, enter a height or manually select a height. If it is not a closed boundary, such as just a line or an open P line or an arc, what you're going to get is a mesh instead. Okay. Um, that you can move. You have a couple grips with and you can extend it further. Uh, actually, you can't because it's, it's tied to... Um, it's tied to this line. If I do this, it'll screw with it a bit and it becomes not associated with this line. But that's kind of for something else. If you ever do an extrusion and you th you see this, you see the mesh, even if you have like a, a, a closed P-line or what you think is a closed P-line and you go do an extrusion, which this one shouldn't do that, but let's say we do a P-edit and we see... Uh, Let's assume that this is slightly separated, so much so that you barely even notice it. Let's put it like right there. But you're really zoomed out, and you're like, okay, this looks like it's a complete polyline. I'm going to extrude it. You come in here, and oh, no, you've got uh, a mesh. And you're like, but it's closed. And you don't know which one of these corners is open. Um, you need to close it. You need to redraw your shape, or you need to go investigate each corner until you find it, or type in p-edit and just say close. And this little section here that is actually open will close up. But it will close up using a line that, that's the shortest path. Notice how it added a vertice here. Okay? So keep in mind, you just if I've got this way out here and I want to close it, right, do a p-edit. Oops, let's do a join first. And I do a p-edit and I want to close this, it's going to draw a line from that point. That's how, oops, I did not mean to do that. We want to, we want to close. There we go. And, and, uh, and it closes it by drawing a line between it. So just kind of keep that in mind. It introduces additional vertices into your P line. So, all right, let's get off of that tangent. So if you see the mesh, you know that you know that you do not have a closed P line. If you get the solid object, you have a closed boundary and you have an, uh, extruded 3d solid. Uh, from this, you can adjust the boundaries after the fact. So uh, the boundary at the bottom, uh, you can adjust the extrusion height, and you can adjust the taper. The taper is kind of cool, and you can actually adjust the taper from the from the outset, from from the beginning. We can extrude. Okay, and I'm sorry if I'm going fast in the um, command line. I'm just kind of doing most things verbally because you know where the commands are now. Um, but we're gonna extrude. And when I'm doing the extrusion, in the, in the last video, I talked about a direction and, our, and, and a path. In this one, you can do a taper angle. And you can choose what your taper angle is going to be. So I'm just going to say we're, we're going to do a 45-degree uh, taper angle. Now, as I do my uh, extrusion, it's, it's coming up to a point, essentially making some kind of a wedged pyramid. Uh, with the top lopped off, depending on how high it is, I'm st it's still looking for a height. So if I only make this with a you know a height of one, it is a height of one in the z axis. So if I draw a line down one, so you kind of see where we're how we're looking, the height of this 
is one inch. Okay, that's the height of my extrusion with a 45 degree taper on the walls. Um, and you can adjust that taper angle afterwards. I can go uh, do a 30 degree taper and change this to six inches tall. Properties window gives you access to um, more precise functions rather than just grabbing a grip and kind of going at it. But if you're just doing something conceptually, you grab the grips. If you need something precise, you can do that with uh, your, your properties window here. Okay, so basic extrusion. Similarly, I'm going to kind of jump over here to press pull. So press pull is very much like extrusion, so much to the point where you might ask yourself, why would I need to press pull, right? Like it's the same thing. Yes and no. While it does make an extrusion, you notice that a few things are different about this 3D solid. It no longer has the grips that I can stretch on the sides. I can move, but I cannot stretch. I can adjust the, the uh, extrusion height, okay? That's the first thing. And it, and it has a taper angle. Now, Again, why would you use press pull? Well, there's a couple other things you can do with press pull. When you use a press pull, the command does not end. So I select this. The, you see how the command is still active. That means I can select another face and press and pull that side and just keep going if I want to. That's a neat little function you can do. And you can come back later, redo the command, and still bring that side out. It's like dragging that face outward. And you can pick a distance on how far you need to come out. So it's fast in that regard. But where press pull really shines is you'll notice how the perimeter or this box is highlighted without me putting my mouse over it. That's because with the press pull, you can choose an area to extrude, a closed boundary. Now, on a rectangle like this, it's not that big of a deal. It's, it's kind of silly. You know, why would you choose this over extrusion? It becomes more important when you have something like this. Now, I'm going to show you two different methods of the same thing. Get rid of this. Now, typically, if I only knew about extrusions, my method of thinking would be I'm going to extrude this. But if I extrude this, I've got all these individual solids inside of this one. And if I go to a different uh, visual style, you can see they kind of just overlap. I need to, to cut holes in this. And so, and I haven't gone over this just yet, but I will. You can use a subtract function where you subtract all the internal volumes out of this. And now I've got this hollow thing that I'm looking for. With press pull, you don't need to do all of that. With press pull, when you have something like this, you can choose it, uh, you initiate the command. And what happens is you choose the space in between all of that. You can see how everything lights up because that's the closed boundary. It's being bound by the perimeter box and all the interior boxes. When I put my mouse inside this face, I get the exact same thing as if I had done an extrusion with some, um, with some uh, subtractions. So you can see how this can be really, really handy if you have something that you need to extrude, some kind of a custom shape. You don't have to come here and then do um, subtractions. You can just click inside that face and extrude whatever that face is. And it, it's it's closed boundaries. So um, let's copy this over. Isn't that crazy? Right, because it's a closed boundary. The intersection between these two is completely sealed, if you will. So you can have a bunch of overlapping objects. I mean, I could do this. And all of a sudden, we introduce a whole new set of, of boundaries to extrude. Right? This can make for some really interesting options when it comes to making 3D solids. Because you're able to pretty much make your extrusion shape easily uh, in 2D and then extrude the portion that you want. So that's where press pull uh, really, really shines. Otherwise, if I wanted to press pull out of this, I'd, you know, say I wanted to press pull this section in here or extrude this section, what I would essentially do is trim everything away. Oops, I think I missed one. There we go. So, you know, now I'm trimming everything away. And even then, I still have to join. Otherwise, it'll be a mesh. There we go. Now I'm ready to extrude, and I, I've got what I needed. So it, it can just it can speed things up a lot. So press pull is a, is a unique function that you can use uh, when you need it. When doing basic extrusions for circles and, and other polylines and rectangles, probably not as helpful. Um, but when you're doing some more complex things, it can really start to shine. And especially if you want to quickly just drag a face, you know, any one of these things can be, you know, drug out. It's pretty neat. 
So, okay, now enough of that. I'm kind of gushing over press pool. It's fun to use. Um, so we can get rid of that. All right, oh, and with press pool, you leave your original objects. With, uh, with extrude, you lose it. So you can see that like, if I have two rectangles, sorry, I gotta make this distinction real quick. If I got two rectangles and I extrude one and I press pull the other, if I erase this extrusion, the rectangle's gone because it converted that close boundary into an extrusion, into a 3D solid. If I erase this one, it leaves it behind because I'm extruding a region, not necessarily the boundary. Okay, all right. Next, we're gonna move on to revolve. Maybe a little bit less used, but can have its uses depending on what your line of work is and and uh, and if you need something like this. Revolve um, solves the function of a, of a curved extrusion, um, especially something like a torus, right? Yes, you could make a torus or a donut, um, you know, primitive and then edit it, but what if you have a more complex shape that you need to revolve? You could use a path, um, which, you know, let's say I wanted to extrude along a path, We'll make this arc my path, do an extrusion, do a path, and there it is. You could do that too. Um, but revolving basically takes a profile, a closed boundary, again, polyline, circle, something like that. And it's looking for an axis. If I make an axis right here, it's gonna follow this circle. It's basically, what is this gonna revolve around? So this is the central point of my axis, right? That, that is my defining axis. And now I can choose an angle for my revolved circuit, circus, surface. So if I only need to you know, make this a 30 degrees, starting from zero, cardinal point zero, if I only need 30 degrees, I can type in 30 and I only get a 30 degrees little chunk of delicious sausage here, okay? Um, and so uh, if you need to use a revolve function, you know, it's there for whenever you do need it. So, and you can change that angle of revolution afterwards. There's a couple little things you can do afterwards that you couldn't do with an extrusion. So, um, okay. So that's our that's our revolve. Um, pretty simple, straightforward there. Now we're gonna go to loft. Now loft is a little trickier. Uh, at its core, it's simple, but it can be a little tricky. The thing about loft is it takes two profiles um, and it attempts to connect them. So for example, we have two closed boundaries here and it might be difficult to extrude this and connect it to this, right? With the taper and all that. But using a loft, I can do that. I can connect these two profiles. What's interesting about loft is that you can connect more than one profile. So I can say, uh, when I loft, it's asking me for my cross sections. Well, there's one cross section, here's the next cross section, and here's the next cross section. By default, you'll notice some funky behavior. It's curved. Now, why would it curve? Well, that's just because the default behavior is smooth fit. When you select a loft, you see that you get loft options. If you need it to be the same as its original cross sections, you choose ruled. And now we can see the, the original cross sections. We've got one here, one here, and one here. These are our cross sections. Um, lofting can also use guides and paths. Um, you'll see that um, you've got uh, points join multiple edges. A lot of these you really, I, I'm not gonna do a deep dive into loft because this is really more over, um, this video is more over a quick uh, intro and guide into a bunch of functions. I can probably do an in-depth loft uh, video because it might take a little more time than I want to. But most of the time you're just gonna be able to, you're gonna pick your profiles um, and then afterwards you can do guides and, and path and whatnot and Doing that, like I can make a, a a line that does like this and this, you know, and then like that, and let's just go to the front and join these with our P line. Ooh, did not want to do that. Are we? Ooh, I should not have done that. Let's do a P line instead. All right, now we've got a P line. That's what I wanted. So let's say we do a loft here, here, and here, and we want to do a path, for example. And see, this, this, it won't let me do it, so 
I didn't have that. I didn't have this pre-planned out, but sometimes the path won't work. But it, what it will do is take your cross sections and attempt to guide them along a path that you set. Again, it takes a little bit of experimentation and playing around with, um, and I'll do an in-depth in loft video, but I don't really ever do lofting too often on three profiles, and you can do the same thing with circles. So if I have a, a circle, right, and then I have, like, say, another circle and another circle, like a little one, and I move this up here, and then I do this one way up here, I can loft between these three circles, makes kind of a funky little volcano cone shape, I can do it uh, ruled, where it's like sharp, or I can do it smooth fit, where it's got that you know little lampshade effect to it. So most of the time when I'm doing loft, it's to go from one shape to another. Um, you know, maybe one polyline. If these all have, you know, that has this shape, and this one has that shape, and I do a loft, you know, it'll attempt to. Did I? Oh. <laughs> Let me do this. There we go. Let's try that now. Now that they're not in the same plane. Right? So we got some funky, crazy little shape. Right? I'm just kind of throwing things out here. Or we can do it ruled. You know, you can do some really interesting things with loft. But it's really just for connecting two profiles, two planes. Okay. Um, lastly, we have sweep. Now, sweep is kind of silly because sweep is essentially... Um, like an extrusion along the path. And in most cases, it doesn't really matter which one you use. So if I take sweep, and it's gonna want a path. If I do sweep, it's gonna ask me for a path. And it, you can, you know, that path can be, let's do a front, front UCS, do a polyline. And what we're gonna do is do a SP line. So uh, P edit. And I'm going to curve this with an SP line function, okay? And then I'm going to sweep along a path. And there's my, again, crazy little sausage shape. So, so uh, sweeping has its functions as well, but really, I think extrusion will handle what you need in most cases, because sweep kind of does the same thing in, as extrude in like 90% of the cases or more so. Um, I'd say, you know, stick with extrusion. It's simpler and easier. That being said, um, that's it for now. Um, I'll, I'll go over a lot of the modifications when in another video, but I wanted to get through these basic functions. So hopefully that kind of stuff helps you out there.